Crown's in the book. Staggy and Barney back to talk about all of it. Get stuck in to some footy chat. How are you, Barn? You know, you're in a stiflingly good mood. <laughs> Absolutely. And <laughs> just going off our last two minutes of off-air chat. Um, I believe there's congratulations in the air, mate. The yeah, proposal really- made over the weekend. Congratulations. Yeah. She made a man out of me. Fantastic. God knows I hadn't got around to it, so whatever. We'll roll, we'll roll with it. <laughs> In the same way, I'm sure at some point I'll just turn up when I'm told to and get married. But anyway. Do as you're told. Exactly. Well, you may as well get used to it early. Exactly. So, mm. um, yeah, got done surprised. Apparently everyone knew about it but me, but uh, shocked. <laughs> and uh, it was good. Yeah, nice moment at Magic Round there. So, um that was the rest of the weekend. Fantastic. Really good weekend. Sure, it would have been the real good. of Magic Round fairly safely. Not too many incidents. Nice. At least, uh, or none that can be had uh, without D Butler there, but that's fine. He was in fine. <laughs> it was very good. Uh, Greg. In good form, was he? Enjoyed himself. Uh, Vinny enjoyed it. Oh, everyone that was with us uh, is coming back next year. So, wow, fantastic. They do it. So, yeah, fantastic experience. Everyone. If you're rugby league, if you're watching this show and um, like you are a rugby league nuffy, and you should, everyone should do it at least once, uh, as you've done, Barn. But uh, it's you know, all three days were sold out, but they obviously weren't. Not every game was full. I just came across on TV, but um, I thought it was fantastic. And yeah, uh, it is what it is. Once you know Brisbane, you know the, the good and the play out of the joint. And um, I really, really enjoy Brisbane. So I had a good time. I'm guessing the place is buzzing again. Yeah, uh, the, that Warriors game was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, the sound came through well. Yeah, yeah, there was uh, apparently, according to Fox, they had the highest rating. I think six o'clock game, four six o'clock Friday game, highest rating five thirty Saturday game, and highest rating four p.m. Sunday game ever. Um, so people are watching the coverage. Mm-hmm. NRL feels hot at the moment, uh, despite their best efforts to not. I think they're just. They're, <laughs> The administration is kicking a lot of goals. If uh, a lot of the other assets of the facets of the game can get their shit together, um, they'd be on an absolute heater. But yeah, great weekend. I, the only if, if I was going to have criticisms, I and only nitpicks more than anything else. Uh, I would I wouldn't mind a a proper musical act at some point. I reckon like a grand yeah, final. Absolutely, musical act. There was just there was literally nothing. There was a cool um, dance troupe on the Saturday night. Uh, Mr. Mr. Australia or something similar. They were good, but uh, like even just uh, between that downtime in the uh, those games where there's the extended break, I you know throw in a even if it's an Ian Moss or a I don't know, like you could find someone worthwhile. Just yeah, absolutely. Artists I think would be would keep people around because it empties out. I think a lot of people uh, couldn't quite pull off the three days straight, but it. Yeah, and a lot of people are pretty pretty keen to get back onto Caxton Street too, as I'm pretty sure. But you're right. So, uh, but it was all good. There was lots of, lots more stuff in Caxton Street. They'd set up the street um, from where we, when we went. They had a, a big footy there and all the merch and stuff on Caxton Street. So nice. That was that was cool and yeah, good good weekend all around. So beautiful. To new uh, to Magic Round and I yeah can't wait to do it again. I'm thinking I lost count of how many times I said to. Greg or Mariah or someone around that uh, had goods footy because it was just it was just fun. <laughs> so, yeah. What more do we want? It reinvigorated my my poor soul after some of the shit in the last few months. But anyway, uh, what do we need to talk about? I haven't done no notes. I'm rolling with the punches tonight. But I guess very quickly pulling up the injury report. We'll start there before we get to the coaching merry gram. A stags. Uh, is being rested this week with an with a rib injury. Bradman Best is out for a month with a hamstring. That went during the Knights game. Connor Watson's out for a month with a throat injury, I believe, from training. Which yeah, right. is ideal. He's been on a speaking of things on heaters, he's had a, a fantastic month. So uh hopefully he's okay. And obviously Cam Munster went down with that pretty scary looking groin injury, which has been plaguing him all season, but it wasn't wasn't great. Uh, Wade Egan's been a category one. He'll miss this with HIA. It's about the injury report. Very quickly looking through. Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't a couple more lower leg injuries, to be honest. The, the field seemed a bit greasy, especially on the first night. did get a bit better towards the end of the weekend. Yeah, but, however, um, the, the best thing that happened, I think, was the, the very warm Saturday. And it just, yeah. 
I think there's a lot of. I think that Friday a lot of moisture was coming up from under it, given the rain. Yeah, had. it seemed that way. It looked like it on TV. Yeah, yeah. earlier in the week. Uh, so I think I thought the field played great, all things considered. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely it did. Um, Munster's too apparently is a hip injury that's affecting his groin. So that's what right. Anasta said last night on um, 360. Okay. Being his manager, I guess he'd have some sort of insight there. But um, that would yeah. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, but it's a long thing. That I believe, uh, from what I heard, he had to. He, he was trying to get to the end of the year to have surgery. Like it had, yeah, surgery was coming, but he couldn't get there essentially. So and basically, now they're just looking at trying to get him right for the finals, and then and that's optimistic go from there. Yeah, so they they're actually at the yeah they've got some issues there. The storm in personnel, uh, from judiciary, well, the two dopes, Brett Naden and Justin Olam, both copped a match. Actually, Olam, I can't. Group in that he was unlucky. I, I would call it unlucky. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Top look man. intentional. Given there were three hip drops in the Penrith game that none of them got binned, it was uh, left a poor taste in my mouth. And uh, Josh Puppy got uh, he's taken the one match guilty plea as well. Yeah, Braden, uh, Brent Naden's probably speaks for itself. Yeah, his end Puppy's probably looked like they could have got an extra an extra week on top of what they were given, to be honest. But. Uh... Well, since we've last talked, Fafida's backflipped. He's yes. taking the Titans. Okay. <laughs> well, fantastic for the Titans, obviously. Um, not sure what, what it was all about, uh, to be honest. Uh, it, it doesn't look like it's furthered his contract or anything anywhere else. So, um, he, he now will probably a no-go for the rest of his career, so I dare say he's stuck at the Titans now for the rest of his career because... I, th- I dare say some of the – well, even the bigger clubs probably aren't going to go anywhere near him in the future. So. No. Given they – well, apparently it came back to lifestyle and he didn't want to leave his family and whatever, so that's the official line. So maybe he's happy for the rest of his life. Fair enough. The, yeah, the Roosters weren't particularly happy about it. They put out a statement. Uh, there was another statement today from the Roosters in relation to mm. alleged white powder controversy without the white powder. That's out there floating around. People would have seen that. Mm. Yeah, nothing to see here. Good. No, quite literally, you can't actually see anything going on. But yeah. um, it must have been a pretty dusty room from what I've seen. So, I, um, Yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's and about it. They South officially announced Wayne Bennett today for 2025. Three-year Fantastic. Yeah. So he's back there. And Brad Arthur, I wouldn't say out of nowhere, but shortly after re-signing an extension, uh, the Parramatta board let him go and in a pretty blunt statement basically said, hasn't been good enough. Yeah. Um, pretty well handled by both parties. Or from what I've heard come out of the, uh, out of the coach, Arthur, um, seems quite respectful and all the rest of it, what, what's, what's happened, what's gone on. Um, Happy with his time there, and, and I think um, Parramatta covered himself pretty well too. Actually, basically said we made the decision May one. Uh, we've been chasing Bennett ever since. He was our man we're after, and we missed him, so we move on and we go somewhere else. But um, yeah, if you ask uh, most Parramatta fans that I've spoken to, they've been uh, asking for this to happen probably in the last five years. So yes, at least yeah, at least the last three. Well, definitely, and and even leading up to the grand final year, there was there was still yeah, got, seemed to got, be a fair bit of discontent. He got booed on the big screen at the grand final, so Parramatta fans are <laughs> are their own breed. Big shout out to Il Lee, good friend of the show, good man. But yeah, uh, they certainly are their own breed, Parramatta fans. Uh, not a lot of other news, I don't think. Anything I've missed, obviously, no, no, not particularly. Uh, Anything catch your eye from afar in regards to Magic Round? Oh, nothing that really st- stood out individually. Obviously, we'll go through it as we get into the games. But, um, yeah, as you said, the, the field seemed like it held up really well. There was a, definitely a buzz around most games that you could that seemed to be coming through the television, especially that Penrith Warriors game with the, the way that boiled over at the end there. And Yeah, it just seemed like a fantastic weekend. Absolutely. Can confirm it was. And as I said, if, if you're a league fan, make sure you do it. And I mean, if you're not, it's a lot of fun. But 
uh, hopefully become an at least an uh, biennial, but possibly annual pilgrimage for me for the next uh, few years. But anyway, it did kick off. 24-20, the Raiders getting home over the dogs in a, a pretty entertaining game. Four tries apiece, Barton, but you can kick us off with some stats. Yeah, four tries apiece, four out of four conversions for the Raiders, two out of four for the dogs, 14-12 uh, at halftime towards the dogs, 74% completion played 71%. 293-plus running metres for the Dogs, four line breaks to six, 36 tackle busts for the Raiders, 37 for the Dogs, nine offloads apiece, two forced dropouts from the Bulldogs, 350 tackles played 343. Both teams made 12 errors, six penalties conceded to two, three ruck infringements against the Dogs, one inside the 10 against both teams, and two sin bins from Canberra. Um, Hudson Young with 114 supercoach points, Crichton with 101 and Kiraz with 92. Yeah, not not fantastic sin bins either. No. And the uh, the crowd certainly net. Let uh, Rapana know about it. So. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the dogs' attacks simply did not good enough to give away the first two tries the way that they did to the Raiders. And they gift, you gift the opposition two tries in the space of, what was it, 10 minutes, um, maybe even less than... They were absolute gifts, realistically. Connor Tracy fumbles a bomb uh, that, that just bounces straight back. Off poor old Connor. He came to so savage. Him. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then, um, what was it? It was just a ball that bounced off Kiraz's chest and went straight to Chris, and he just walked over untouched as well. Yep. Um, when they get it right, the, the dogs in their attack, it does look good, but they still, still, even when they're getting it right, they struggle to be to put points on and. Um, that was the story of the game, realistically, uh, even with the two players off for the Raiders for that extended period. They they are very, of all teams this weekend, they're one of the worst for just being left to right with no, unless Connor Tracy straightens them up, that feels like there's not, there's either that or they're trying to isolate Crichton. Uh, and they actually created quite a few overlaps where Crichton didn't pass, um, where Kiraz, <laughs> the first half perhaps, could have found some space in the sideline, but... Uh, yeah, they, they do feel a little bit formulaic. I thought the Raiders handled, did a great job on kick out. Had, had Absolutely. A, a very little impact in this game. That would, that would have been Hudson Young, wouldn't it, out there? Who who I thought was was very, very good in this game. That's Whitehead's side. But, um... He was in a mood. I don't know what he said. He couldn't hear <laughs> it. But he was having some lectures. Uh, was it four weeks in a row now? Someone's got into old Reed's face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Whitehead and Strange out on that side, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, he's yeah. becoming uh, quite a, a very good defensive half, actually, Ethan Strange. He's, mm. he's, he seems to be improving a lot as he as he's going along. Um, Canberra returned the favour with a with a gift try to <laughs> to um to the dogs when Savage come across and Rapana and looked like to me on well from the television coverage, it looked like he tried to knee his head off yeah. and didn't put it into the stadium somewhere. Essentially. <laughs> It's it still got me baffled why these blokes don't just dive on the ball most of the time and they're trying to slap it over or kick it over and it ends up bobbling around and someone dives on it. But, yeah, that that one could have been covered up a bit a bit, bit better, I reckon. Or just ground it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they, they return a the favour. Then uh, that was about it for the dogs for the game, I thought. They had, they had a bit of possession, but it did feel like second half Raiders had a lot of momentum. Yeah, especially once they got their their two players on, because the, the dogs built up and um and got a few points in that period where you had the two Raiders off and they, yeah, you yeah, know, I they think stri- both Crichton and Burton scored in that period. Yeah, that's right, and they, and they were good. that side to side probably helped helped them a little bit with the less numbers, you know what I mean? And um they were they were a little bit straighter. Crichton Crichton did um sort of dig into the line a little bit, and so did Burton in those times. And funny funnily enough, they got points out of it. But um, the moment that the Raiders got their their two players back on the field, they really upped the tempo. And by the back end of this game, it looked like the dogs were running on absolute empty towards the back end. And yeah, uh, Savage and Weeks were were causing problems. Weeks made a few nice little breaks, and Savage was floating across the the face of the defence and picked up Hudson Young a couple of times, and <laughs> that was all she wrote realistically. Yeah, mag- magnificent short ball uh, for the first one. And can't Young run a line? Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Strong, hard to handle. I, I think he has to be in New South Wales 17. It's looking more and more like it, yeah. 
is he's had a, a decent enough season, but this was a this was as good an Origin try as you can as you'd see. I think he was did a lot of work. He bust his ass, but obviously those two great tries were um, cream on top defensively. He looked good as well, and um, yeah, as we touched on, Whitehead has come back in really good form since he's got back on the field. Hard to knock him being inside ahead of some of those others. Yep. And and the lead up to to the Raiders really gaining momentum for mine. There was one ball that was played probably all weekend, and it was kick out actually put his foot on the thing and played it backwards, and the dummy half shit himself and knocked the ball on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the Raiders go seventy meters down the other end of the field. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that tickled my fancy that one. I'm like, okay, the hell's that the one? But one that's actually played properly, <laughs> they dropped the ball. But um. Yeah, the halves had some really nice touches in there. I thought Hughes and Zeri were okay for the dogs. Hutchinson had a couple of nice kicks um, for some try assists, but it's just, I don't know, you're beating a dead horse. They keep playing him. There's no, probably no point in commenting it. on it. And it looked, but, but it even looked live, it looks in slow motion compared to some of the other ball players. Yeah. Strange, Strange is fantastic. He's a different class altogether. As you mentioned, you mentioned his defense before, but even his footwork into the line, uh, he's. His kicking was good. Other weeks, his kicking was more than more than serviceable as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I've, it's when one of his um the traits that I've noticed since he's been put into this team. Um, but yeah, as I said, Hutchinson had a couple of nice kicks, but some shocking passes that, that hit the ground and all the rest of that. Reed, Curran, and Preston were pretty good. I think Preston seems to be warming back into it. I expect a pretty big game out of him, I would imagine, in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, Burton and Crichton were very good. Uh, King and Karaz were probably their best players. I thought Max King was enormous again for, for the Dogs, and so was Kiraz. Um, Tapane and Smithies were good, as was, as well as was Tomoko. Whitehead, Strange were awesome. But, um, yeah, it was Hudson Young that was the difference at the end of the day. Made a whole heap of tackles, heaps of enthusiasm, and, yeah, that, those run, those lines he ran are pretty special at times. Agree, agree. Three points, Hudson, uh, two points, Strange, one, two, yeah, either King or Karaz, I would have suggest. That's what I had, yeah. I'll probably go with King. Yeah, he he did stand out. Uh, clearly best of the, uh, and I know they did a great effort shutting kick out down, but clearly best of um, the, the Bulldogs forwards. And... Um, Karaz unlucky, really, because he did make a quite a few good contributions as well. But uh, Like I said, there was half chances there where if he perhaps got given a couple, he probably comes away with two tries, but... Uh, different difference was the halves in Hudson Young. I agree. So let's uh, let's go with that. Both these teams look great. Just keep winning as they did last year. Both, but both these teams look there or thereabouts. Neither were the worst team I saw on the weekend by a long way. I would suggest. No. And then we got. Yeah, definitely should be in the mix in and around that bottom of the eight. Yeah, if legitimately only a, a proper halfback away is keeping the dogs from from really. Attempting that, that finals. That yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 13 to 12. Another, well, the next entertaining game in the list Broncos over the Seagulls in the final minutes. A Jock Madden field goal uh, as the former Tigers halves clashed here. And <laughs> what did the stats say? Two tries apiece, two out of two conversions for both teams, and one out of one field goal attempt for the Broncos. Uh, a missed two-point field goal attempt for Manly. 80% completion from both teams. Didn't feel like that, really, <laughs> when I watched this game. It felt a, bit, a fair bit sloppier than 80% completion, mm. but 120-plus running metres for a, Manly. There was a period, just before half time, that 15-minute period, I don't think anyone could hold the ball. Like, if if, the, if there was 80% completion, it had to have been zero for, for that 20 <laughs> Well, they were dropping them backwards or something, yeah, but yeah, yeah it looked yeah. really scrappy. Uh, four line breaks apiece, 37 tackle busts apiece, seven offloads to four, one force dropout to two, 352 tackles played, 325 for Brisbane, 12 errors to nine, two penalties conceded to four, three ruck infringements apiece, one inside the 10 for both teams, and a sin bin for Manly. Garrick with 101 super coach points, Hamoli with 85, Cooler with 79. Then you had another Manly player before you got to Cobo on 71. Very interesting, actually, that uh, both Kikau and Haas look like they're leaving on in ambulances on that Friday night, uh, and both returned to the field. So I assume J H Christ must have been the ground manager or something. But <laughs> some miraculous recoveries there. Sorry, what were you going to say? 
No, no. I was just going to just kick off and say that Brisbane looked um, on fire for the first 10 minutes. We just thought how far we were just going to sit yeah. back to the show. It, they they look well, well up for it. Um, even with their outs, they're back, you know, outs, the, it was back and forth for about five minutes, but then Brisbane just absolutely took over for the next 10. Um, punching down the front door um, on the back of a couple of Manly's mistakes in that first try. There was a couple this weekend where the first try was just way too simple. <laughs> yeah. Where the teams just didn't switch on properly or they got lost in the fireworks or the smoke or <laughs> whatever it was from the weekend. But, like, Piercora went through untouched on it. He ran a good line and it was a, it was a pretty nice outball for, for him to go through. But... They didn't get anywhere near him. There's two blokes that basically stood there and watched him. They <laughs> just watched him go past. Um, and another one, Jock Madden. I thought he had a seriously good game in this. He had his hands on a lot of what was done well for the Brisbane side. Um, I, I would struggle to think of a better first grade game he's actually had. A more complete first grade game, I should say. The kicking was pretty much on point. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and then they went out to that right edge and. Ezra almost did the the DCE from a couple of weeks ago where he's, he's thrown the dummy and then sort of half gone through the line and then hit the winger and everyone stood there and watched him just cruise over to score and over on the other side of the field. But um, I don't know what happened there. Um, like it, it got sort of back into a grind, but it just seemed to me like Brisbane either just switched off the attack completely or just got a bit confused of exactly what the game plan was and what, what areas of the field that they wanted to attack and just... It just turned into a real stalemate for half an hour or so. Yeah, funny because there were individuals that were, I thought Selwyn was great in this game. He was very absolutely. Good. I thought Jock was great as we touched on. Uh, we'll get the forward pack very soon, I'm sure. But but as a whole, I think I agree. There just was no. They were just happy to go through the motions as much as anything, or drop the ball. There was no real. There was a bit of slipping and sliding sort of around in the middle of the field there, as as I mentioned earlier. It did seem pretty greasy on the Friday night. and But there was a lot of passes that hit the ground behind players as well. And yeah. you know, guys having to turn around and chase back and pick that up. Um, and that really, you know, we chuck in some errors and penalties and it really turned into that stop-start type footy that really goes nowhere <laughs> for a fair period of time. And... Um, Manly had some good scramble at different points where, where Brisbane were sort of pressuring them uh, in the corners, but uh, Brisbane had to do the same as well because I think Manly probably blew two or three chances as well where they where they had players set up on the outside and, as I said, the ball either hit the ground or player dropped it in, in pretty good position. Well, how many balls in this game, you mentioned before, how many balls in this game went behind Paulo? <laughs> Is it quite a few. There was about five that were thrown into touch. Because he was either too flat or too – was it this game? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, they had him stripped a number of times in that second half. Yeah, and um, a lot of it was coming off the back of Cooler. I thought he looked quite good again at fullback. Uh, got him into some nice positions, but the, the ball just didn't seem to get anywhere near where it needed to. And poor execution it killed off a few of their chances. I don't think any of Manly's tries they, they, uh, would have been – truly happy about, to be honest. Uh, they didn't look like there was anything uh, special about them. It more looked like Brisbane sort of misread numbers or just got themselves into yeah. a bad position. It was very interesting this game, how much first receiver Luke Brooks played. Like, mm -hmm. for a good, for most sets, he was leading the team around the park and DC was happy to take the back seat uh, unless it was kicking out of trouble. And that leads towards, I guess, the more frantic... Luke Brooks style, we know, and not quite as doesn't lend itself to a really yeah, probably did yeah. clean play. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was fine, but he just wasn't. It's just interesting how much of the ball he was taking, um, you know, first receiver uh, and and moving across field. I thought Alakwato had nice touches. Looks always looks dangerous live. Oh, 100 uh, percent. Garrick a decent enough game, uh, and. Not a, yeah, the rest of these, the, you know, there's not heaps you'd st say were complete standouts. Waddell and William all both okay. Um, Supercoach absolutely loves Gary God. The fuck if I know how he gets half the points that he oh, gets yeah. every week. <laughs> like, yeah. He gets credited with tackle busts and line breaks that you, you, I don't know where they come from, but 
<laughs> anyway, he did he did have one really nice run which did lead the points down the right edge there where he did beat a couple of blokes. Yeah, well, I think they get through the line. Four, five tackle bust, yeah. Yeah, but um. Yeah, uh, where were we? I thought Lawton, Jake, and um, the young winger Vega had pretty good games. Um, Cooler got him into some good positions. DCE um, was very good at at parts of the game, but yeah, as you said, it was more so his kicking and and only really got involved when they were in a, a position to try and lay on points. Mm. Yeah, he got a back seat, for, and I I don't know if just because I know it, it was more conscious of it or whether it's a there's something more going on, whether just Origins two weeks away, but he was very much yeah, quite like, possibly. He was as he was as dinner suited up as you can get. <laughs> and, yeah. and yeah, Olakawatu and Garrick were their biggest um biggest threats and and caused their most problems. Jensen, Hass, and Ricky were were good without being brilliant. Willison just keeps coming on and have like Belton blokes for twenty five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see him get forty and just see if he can keep it up for forty minutes. I also wouldn't be... find the only thing, other thing missing. I'd love to see more crash plays to him. They don't. They play him as they run a lot of decoys past him. But mate, the bloke's eight foot tall. Get him. Yeah. Just hazelled him up. Get him. And he's coming on yeah for twenty five minutes, causing chaos. Like running one hundred and forty fifty meters, making heaps of tackles, belting blokes. Um, he's got an offload in him as well. I'd I'd love to see him stretch him out the forty minutes and just see how much of an impact he can really have in the middle of the field. Um, you mentioned yeah, Madden was very good. Carrigan had a fantastic game without really being noticed. You know, just went through yeah. and does what he does every week. I believe you're in 265 meters. And, <laughs> yeah, incredible game. 40 tackles. He just and, he's yeah. just there. He's Cobo just there. was fantastic as well. I I had him as my man of the match. Cobo, like no <laughs> Carrigan. Oh yeah, yeah okay. Yep. And by the end of it, like because you just like you notice him making the tackles, but it's just so he's always doing it. So yeah. he doesn't really register you that. He's chopped down four blokes and it's in a tackle in a set of six, you know what I mean? Like through the middle. And there was a set where he, or not a set, there was a, a period in that second half where they were, were very flat and he was taking two and three hit ups. Yeah, yeah. and there was, there was, there was one set, I think he had two, two hit ups and clocked up near 70 meters just yeah. off those two hit ups. Um, like, he'd get tackled, then he'll just get up and line up for the next run. Like yeah. after he, they got back in the line. He was. I think, yeah, without him, I think they definitely lose. They probably get beaten through the middle, to be honest. Yeah. Um, if without him, I gave Garrick the two, and then I had Cobo or Madden for the one. I I agree with Pat. We'll go with Pat because, yeah, he was very good live. Uh, we'll go. That's tricky because I thought Cobo was good, but Madden did kick the winning field goal and led them around. Set up the first try. But Cobo was a constant threat and busted a fair few tackles and got down the sideline a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, go to Cobo. He was up near 260 Cobo, metres that, as well, I think. Very, very unlucky on on Jock. That happens every week, unfortunately. <laughs> you got to leave a couple of them out. Then uh, Saturday kicked off with a surprisingly entertaining game, 28-24. Mm-hmm. Knights over the Titans, who... Some have argued we're unlucky, maybe, uh, with that bunker decision. But it was the um, the hat trick. It started out similar, and I'll let you the stats first. It started out similar to the other games where before you knew it, it was twelve nil, and you're thinking, "Oh, here we go." And Dude, um, what's what's going to happen here? Everything swung around again. Five tries apiece, two out of five conversions. Played four out of five. It was twenty four to ten at halftime to the Titans. Eighty nine percent completion. Played seventy six percent. 85 plus post contact meters for Newcastle, five line breaks to four. 32 tackle bus played 61 for Newcastle. 10 offloads to seven, 304 tackles played 398, six errors to nine. Three penalties conceded to five, two ruck infringements to one, one inside the 10 to zero, and a sin bin for both sides. Armstrong with 106 super coach points, Calm Pereira with 90, and David Fafita with 89. What'd you make of this, man? It was another weekend and another scoreless second half from the Titans. I don't know, the, don't know what they need to do. They may be a bit more pickle juice at half time or um, maybe clock off for 15 minutes in the first half so they can score some points in the second half. But um, yeah, two weeks in a row where the, their attacks look really um, underwhelming in the second half. But this week they weren't able to hang on and win like they were last week. Um,
was a, I thought it was both teams had pretty solid controlled performances throughout the majority of it with, um, yeah, obviously the, the Titans attack falling off towards the back end. Uh, some, some of the attack was atrocious at different times though, especially as in that second half from the Titans. And um, the the Newcastle seemed to dumb down their game a little bit as well. Uh, they're playing really forward forward heavy and trying to look for offloads and players switch back through the middle and and try to wear out the middles for the Titans, which may have something to do with their how bad their attack was in the second half. But um, <laughs> sixty one missed tackles from the Titans. You can question bunker decisions all you want, but no, if you miss sixty one tackles in a game, you deserve to lose. Um, and that bunker decision at the end of the day. I know you made um, comparisons with the Appy one, but when it's a kick along the ground or when your arm's coming over the top, yeah, fine. But if you've got the ball resting on your bicep and your wrist wrapped around it, that's not control. And then you try to put it down and it slides out. Like, yeah, it, it can, I yeah, I, I can't agree with that. I, I I actually was surprised there was so much talk about it yesterday because I live I just thought it was no try. Yeah, and it's just the way it comes out of the hand and and. Yeah, he, he's, his own arm was holding the ball up as well. So unless he's able to really pinch that into his shoulder and sort of score over the back of his shoulder, like we did see later on, um, you, you, yeah, you can't be classing that as a try, I don't think. Um, but they left their run too late again. Uh, they, they had multiple opportunities in the second half and seemed to blow it every time. And, um, yeah, to miss 61 tackles is, is horrible. Um, Newcastle probably should have run all over them at the, at the end of the game, but... Um, it was that last pass issue, which we see with a lot of these teams. They just can't seem to clinch it and get and get the ball over the line. We found a really good supporting fullback for the Newcastle team. Uh, <laughs> three, all three tries were, were were great, and and you know, ability to light up the ground with pace is is always 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 good. But um, yeah, all three were 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 long range entertaining tries. Yeah, he's just getting himself in that right position, obviously, and running and running the right line and angles towards the attack, um, which is probably something KP doesn't do as much, obviously, because he sets himself up as a ball player, which is a different type of you know style of fullback. So we'll have to change their attack a little bit, but it's working for him at times. I don't think either of these teams trouble any of the bigger players, bigger teams going forward. No, I think most weeks. Pars. Par's fair, and I would suggest the difference. Actually, I thought Jackson, Jackson Hastings is very good uh, in a controlled manner, um, getting the team into the right position. I thought I don't, I don't recall seeing Jack Cogger. The more I think of this, did he contribute anything here? Not a great deal. No, there's a couple well, of little grubbers in and around the line, but doesn't he feel sort of like I know he came from Penrith, but you get to reproduce anything close to that? Yeah, he had one or two okay games at the start of the year, but um, yeah. <laughs> But um, Hastings, he definitely took control. Uh, did a lot of calming down. Uh, managed to mm. at least kicking was good, and uh, got them through the motions. They obviously losing best um, didn't help um, the back end of this game. Uh, but I thought Gaga looked good again. Mazu got for a bit a lot of work as he always does. Uh, Their back rowers are having a really good go at the moment too. Uh, Frizzell and Lucas, they're, they're causing heaps of problems. We've got some nice offloads in them and, and footwork from both of them as well. Lucas had a day out in this one really and, and probably got him the, the try that won him the game at the back end. Uh, the Titans really built a lot of pressure from short kicks. Um, there was a lot of kicking in behind the line and um, they got got that right a couple of times and uh, and got some points there to get back. They went really quickly from being ten points behind to, to getting back in front, and then, yeah. you know, pushing it out to twenty-four nil by half time. Um, they did. Uh, they Knights did a great job shutting down for feeder in this game. He was it, another game where he didn't have a uh, a blow away impact. Yeah, they targeted a lot of star players this weekend, yeah. and um, yeah. And I actually thought Bo Foymore outplayed him. I thought he was. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. Uh, close to best on the field, I would argue. Um, and Keeney was impressive at times, um, in and around, um, you know, with his own support play. Uh, not quite as big, but look dangerous. One of my moments of the weekend was seeing Jackson Hastings get sent for 10 with the ball in hand. 
<laughs> being an absolute fucking pest. I loved every second of that. I can't even hear the conversation. <laughs> I need to go back and hear that. Oh, he was stirring shit for about 15 minutes. He was just gibbering it on it, everyone. Yeah, that's a row, right, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He's pushing then... blokes, grabbing the ball, yeah. and trying to trip him over. He was just doing all sorts of shit stuff. <laughs> and then he ends up getting sent for grabbing jerseys and trying to they, well they, they both jersey punched that's why they both got sent for 10 minutes i don't know okay, if you yeah. saw if you saw that come through but yeah they, they both grabbed the jersey and, and hit each other on the chin but yeah, i thought that was brilliant they lose lose the advantage of the ball plus get sent for the bin for just being a shit little halfback <laughs> uh any more of it from this game i like what else do we take from it apart from it was a bit of fun no, as I said, yeah, um, Dylan Lucas is a really likely customer. I really like what I see out of him. Um, he's probably not going to end up in the centres now, but he's he's one of those guys that you can plug and play in the centres if you you know if well, you lose the centre. I haven't looked at the teams for this week, but now with best out, yeah, put it out back there. It's um perfect sort of foil uh, in the the Talakai mould as maybe if, whether he's a bench player or he starts in the back row. He, if you've got a problem in the back line, he goes straight out to centre and you can you can deal with it from there. Um, very good defence, nice footwork and, and some um, good speed there. Uh, yeah, that one that, that one that he set up for him to win the game, I thought was a fantastic piece of play where he went through the middle with some footwork and, and got an offload away back to... Uh, who was that? That was back to Armstrong, wasn't it? He was just scoring tries for fun, <laughs> um, chiming in at five eight and and then centre and different spots on the field. But um, yeah, it's con- the, the the Titans are starting to concern me. They look like they've really got a drop off of them in that last half an hour of, of games recently. So I don't know if that's a fitness thing or if it's a, a mental fatigue thing, but they we're seem to get the, we're also really up bottom, and going. But we're well into the bottom ten of their squad as well. Yeah, that's true. So it's you know when you got you start a game with two hookers, yeah, guys that aren't used to um, playing eighty minutes at uh, NRL level. Get, yeah, you're trying to get minutes out of Aaron Clark. You're trying to get you know starts getting a bit. Looking who do you play? Uh, yeah, starts yeah, getting. Not, it did look inevitable for the Knights. We're going to run away with it. I thought it would have happened earlier. The the Titans did hang on and fight pretty hard to keep them. You know, make them struggle to get to get back and win the game, but um. Yeah, apart from as you said, it was a it was a pretty enjoyable game. There were some really good performances in the forwards and and um and some nice performances from from these outside backs. I thought Weaver had a decent game coming into the the Titans in there. Um, some nice kicks and, and a few nice passes there. Um, Jojo Fafida and Keeney were decent. Keeney had a couple of really nice touches, um, but then again there was a few errors and just out of position a couple of times at the, at the back. But you get that with your young fullbacks, obviously. Beryl's still a little bit underwhelming for mine, but it was decent enough in this game. Um, Kai Pierce Paul was was good again. Uh, Fermor and, and David Fafita were were their best players, but yeah, as, as you said, I thought Fermor was probably the, the Titans' best player out there. And Kelly again, for someone who we've given a fair bit of shit to over the years with his defensive li- liabilities, his attack's been brilliant this year. Yeah, considering some of the stuff he's put out in previous years, um, Hastings and Mazu had decent games. J- Jacob Saifidi had one of his better games. Um, Brayley was was very good as well as Brody Jones. He's yeah. um little little nuggety fellow. He's as wide as he is tall, but <laughs> he gets through the line and 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 put some um put some shots on as well. He's uh he's going quite well. Gay guy was good. Yeah, but Lucas, Lucas and Armstrong for mine were awesome. They were the best two players on the field, I thought. Which way do you, who do you give three to then? Armstrong? Go to Armstrong with the hat trick, yeah. All right. I'll go Bo two and we'll go Lucas one. Or you want Bo to... two, yeah, that's fine. Yep. Lucas one. Cool. And then uh, the cracker at with the Sharks, 38 to 30. Going into this game, I uh, yeah, we did not think over sixty was going to be the way this game was going to pan out, and no, uh, it was four tries apiece by half time, which was uh, well, four of it played three at half time, but yeah, the ball, both teams weren't afraid to advance the ball here. Well, I think as soon as that try was scored in the first minute of the game, it was basically okay. This is what we got to do tonight. So yeah, another <laughs> one that we're... they walked over untouched. Yeah, pretty much. It was. Uh, was... 
took a lot of fucking effort to get there though. <laughs> that was a, that was a pretty. Well, what um, was also good is after that, Bubba decided he was going to play for the next eighty minutes. So that was that was yeah, awesome. That's true. That that that's a good thing. Six tries to five. Six out of six conversions played. Four out of five. One penalty attempt from both. One out of one penalty attempts for both teams. 18, 24, 18 to the Roosters at halftime. 85% completion played 84%. Six line breaks apiece. 33 tackle busts played 35. Five offloads for the Sharks. 18 for the Roosters. One force dropout by the Roosters. 140-20 by the Sharks. 288 tackles played 333. Eight errors to nine. Three ruck infringements to zero. And one inside the 10 against the Roosters. And a sin bin for the Roosters. Hines with 114 super coach points. Dom Young with 97. And Ramian with 88. Yeah, well, Nico has uh, put on as good a audition for that number seven Blues jersey as you'll see leading the way. But, yeah, what, what do you take away at home, Barn? apart from some happiness? Ramian was right up there too. Yeah. He um, put in a great performance. Well, lived up to the hype, didn't it? It was entertaining. Uh, it was very fast, physical, um, and there was a fair bit of skill on, on, on display as well. Some nice different flick passes, short kicks, um, changes of play, and, and different types of – because – I think both teams really went out of out of their way to try and find a way of unlocking each, these uh, the defenses from each other. I think it was more of like of an experimental crack at each other before they get, you know, when they meet up again later down the track, yeah. and really try and work on some different things to open up the defenses of these these two sides. Um, yeah, you mentioned that first try, the first set of six, and they get you had uh, Crichton and Keary both putting pressure on Hines coming down from the inside and so decided to run it short ball to Nicara who goes through the line and then back to Hines back to Ramey <laughs> nice little kick over the top Dom Young probably should have cleaned it up but overran it and um, as said Kennedy fell on top of it and then played very little part for the rest of the game <laughs> he made an, two absolute howlers during the game where I was absolutely cursing him and almost well, it would cost us the advantage going into half time, but um, we'll get there. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that really, uh, really nice try, obviously, to, to start it off. And then the Roosters come back and um, repay the favour pretty quickly, not not long after getting down that right hand edge. And Sue Lee gets into the line with a beautiful little flick for Dom Young, who goes over untouched in the, in the opposite corner. So, yeah, there was, there was some a lot of misdirection and, you know, obviously different types of offloading and flick passes to try and unlock these defences because they're both quite good defensive teams. And I don't think there was too many tries where you looked at and just went, oh, shit, that shouldn't have been a try. Um, a maybe the Hazleton of... one <laughs> that probably yeah, should have been yeah. stopped. Uh, and, and, you know... It, at the back end of the game when you've got a roll on. But... Right, and I'm sure he, you know, a lot of times cleans that up or, or at least holds on. Uh, a couple... There were a couple of times I thought Parker was a bit exposed, not so much yes. during the result of his own, but I think if Joey Manu's out there, uh, the Molotalo try probably doesn't happen. Uh, is it Molotalo one? Which one? Okay. Was it? The Molotalo the one where he in he in and away and then the flick pass? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where they he just – I know he was, he wrong, it was a good piece of play, but I think Manu doesn't give him that extra second of indecision. He's so, not even that bit quicker. Manu, yeah. Um, or chops him down altogether. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm thinking the right one, but I, I haven't watched the replay. But I, I tell you that all the because you know that was the one where he, yeah. he stood him up and, and then and then just wrong footed and uh, inside flipped. outside got on his outside and flicked yeah. it to. Yeah, I think Marty probably just runs in and hits him. Mm -hmm. uh, easy to say, yeah. you know, from <laughs> Rose, you know, but. <laughs> I said Kennedy had a couple of howl howlers right on one and right on half time. It's just a simple pass. Like Katoa did everything right, got across the field, and Kennedy was going to run into a gap. <laughs> he gets hit on the chest and just drops it cold. Yeah. And then the Roosters score basically straight off the back of it. Um, and they got in it, got, went into half time in front. I was never too worried, though. Uh, both teams were trading like constantly. It didn't look like either team really got a big share of the momentum for any, any huge amount of time. And there was. One of Pauga's tries probably should have it was it was pretty lucky. It came from a, a ball that hit the ground and just a, a bit of bad defence from one of the, a bad read, and he went in pretty much untouched. But um, they both come out really physical at the start of the second half. I think they made a point of we're going to get in, get stuck into each other, and really try and 
knock the stuff yeah, out of each I, other. I reckon there was a back into the first half. It felt like Roosters had just clicked up another gear, uh, and it felt like Sharks all of a sudden just weren't. And probably when Cheese came on, probably it was either around when Cheese came on, um, mm-hmm. or they just first got into that interchange. Len Yu, May came on, and you just felt like yeah, Len Yu had a big impact when he first was, came on. Felt panic stations there for Sharks were like, oh, oh shit, this is you know this is what we now have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Then they matched him and almost probably outmatched him in the second half. I thought. Well, McGuinness went to another level in that patch. If you see him, he was one of those guys that was taking two and three hit ups, yeah. like through the middle constantly. Yeah. Um, Katoa came in and did a whole heap of work, and so did Ramian, who really um went out of their way to to double down on some sets and and take the take the running through the middle. Um, I think it all changed when Hazelton came back on for his second stint. Yeah. Had a huge impact again. Yep. Um. Obviously scored that try, but it's just he generally gets a pretty quick play of the ball. He's got um he runs really good lines, so he gets on the outside of most of the he's not running directly onto the chest and getting dragged down with three and four blokes on top of him. He's sort of half getting through the line and then getting rolled onto his side and then he's up and for a quick play of the ball. And then you'll get McGuinness or Braley jump off the back of that and, and um continue on. Um which which really helps. But um <laughs> Either team could have won this game easily. Like it, it did bounce of the ball either I way. Thought, I thought Roosters, just being from a critical Roosters point of view, uh, probably left Cheese off a bit long in that second half. I thought if he comes back on and they're able to just have that quicker punch through the middle, even play him as a smaller forward. And I don't know what his fitness is like. I don't know if he's out of favour. I don't know what's going on. Apart from maybe Connor Watson's just the preferred choice. Uh, he felt at a for a bit there that he could have got them back in that game, but he didn't come on to like the last five minutes and, and the bird had flown by then. I thought Sharks had, it, had the wrestle then. Well, he came on with about 15 to go, but he, he was only out there for about five minutes. They yeah, got rid of him pretty yeah, quick because yeah, they doubled down and the Sharks were running at him. Like yeah. they, they just yeah, went no. at him, tackle after tackle after tackle, and he and had his ass hanging out. And, um, that's when Talakai, yeah, they did have Hazelden and Talakai both on the field, didn't they? So, yeah. Um, that bit extra size. So, Talakai yeah. was fantastic again uh, in a in a short little twenty minute period. Um, Hartapua, I thought he had a massive impact. He's a huge human being and hard to stop. And um, you can just hear the impact when he runs into play. Like he had a, obviously had a bit of a chip on his shoulder as well, being being let go by the Roosters. But I thought he was real physical with him when he, when he got out there. Um, fantastic ball in hand. Does get a little bit loose laterally in defence when they get around the edges of him, but he causes a problem when he's got the ball in his hand. Um, Walker had a pretty decent game, went missing a little bit when when it really did get tough in the middle of the field. Um, Angus was very good. The back five were all strong from the Roosters. They they played almost as well as the Sharks, to be honest. They all got in, did heaps of work, ran for heaps of metres. Um, so well, I really... P- Picked out defensively. Parga maybe was probably the one that did get picked out a couple of times yep. defensively. But, um, yeah, the back five was very strong. Walker and Angus were, were very good. Nat Butcher, has is, is he been injured or has he been left out this week? I thought he was fantastic in this game. But... I don't know. I don't know. And uh, Teddy was great. Um, Watson was brilliant again. Uh, they're they're going to miss him if he's out for a month. Absolutely. He's yeah. been causing all sorts of problems in the middle of the ruck and really getting them going forward, uh, bringing the forwards onto the ball nicely as well. And um, Young was near unstoppable at different times. <laughs> Get him in the right position with his size and strength. He's um, He just scores tries for fun. You Get him in the right spot. And what do you make of <laughs> Nico's performance? Yeah, fantastic. He was playing both sides of the ball, which I like to see. Uh, he, he sort of pushed Atkinson out of the way a couple of times to get over to that left. I'd like to see him do it one one or two more times, to be honest, because Mulatalo is probably not getting the kind of ball that he deserves at the moment because um, you know what the, how good he is out there. But they went down the right and it, it proved good enough. Um, his kicking game was fantastic, except for obviously the one he put out on the full, <laughs> which, yeah. which really hurt us. Um, had us on the back foot for about 15 minutes there and they had to get through a whole heap of defence after that one. It's funny the forty twenty. Um, I don't know if Teddy thought he was on the twenty meter line or he I had to he... have either got a bad <laughs> ball or he just was ten meters off. 
Yeah, <laughs> because it bounced just before the 20 and he, he just sort of stood there and watched it as it – like, it did bounce at right angles. Like, it, it wasn't yeah, – but, but there was no – it felt like he had time to still sort of recover. He was nowhere near it. And he it, just was, yeah. it was 10 or 15 metres away yeah. from it and just sort of watched it go over. And that was a momentum shifter. Uh, I'm pretty sure Shark scored not long after that. But, um, yeah, his long-king game was, was fantastic. He, he got the ball to the outside as exactly when it was needed. I'd like to see him run a, a couple more times. Um, I, I think that's one thing he didn't do as much as he, he has done previously and probably could have... Um, he just seems to now nowadays he only seems to run when there's no other option, rather yeah. than it being an like an attacking option. He just sort of if everything else is shut down he'll run it. Whereas he's not looking to run, he's looking to pass and kick first. But um, yeah, no, I thought he had a terrific game. Anything do you see? No, no, I agree, I agree. But a lot of just going through the motions, like no razzle dazzle. Yeah, stand out. Getting um, to points in the field. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but no, I thought he was good. More than serviceable. Also got the uh, one of the biggest cheers of the of the night when his picture came up on the big screen, which was a surprise. <laughs> Did mention that he, um, uh, the, the people love them some Nico, even in Queensland. <laughs> given what happens to some other players over the round, mentioned how Tapua had really good impact in twenty minutes. So did Talakai. He's become a really important part of the Sharks team. That the twenty minutes that they bring him on for, and he really causes problems. Leg drive through the middle, and uh, I think he pushed his way over for a try again which he's, he's making a habit of. Um, Wilton was fantastic on that left edge. Um, that's another reason I think the ball's not getting out as much to, um, to Mulatalo either because they really like that running op- option of Wilton, which they, they do go to probably a fraction too much. But, um, yeah, Hazleton and Ramian were, were very good as well. So. Which oh, way? Iro. Iro had a fantastic oh, game. It was good, yeah. Fuck, he gets through some work. The bloke just doesn't stop. I can take the ball up at least one hit up every set of six. And, you know, imagine if he starts getting some attacking stats, he'd be an absolute super coach, fucking wizard. Like okay. he's generally a catch and pass out to Mulatalo, but you know, like if he starts scoring tries or setting up tries for Mulatalo out on that edge, he's super coach. He scores 60 in base for a center. He's, like, yeah. All of a sudden he's in that Kiraz category. Yeah, absolutely. Does that. Um, the best team in the last four years has had the best back five in Penrith in terms of work rate. Mm-hmm. And I think the best team this year now has the best back five in terms of work rate. I think it's now setting up yes. the boards to deliver what they do uh, because they know they're going to get be coming back to their first run of the game on the 40 or 50 meter line at least instead of having to get back and try and pig out of the you know 15 or 20. Yeah, one of the radio shows that have heard during the week it was last week before magic round went through the actual stats and the centers for the sharks at the moment work harder than the penrith centers but then you've got and everyone else is about the same but edwards and toto get 250 meters every week so yeah. <laughs> they end up but you know they and end she- up on top with meters just because people can't stop them and they make fucking yeah. 280 meters every week but, two, two is incredible he is incredible we'll get to him shortly uh all right, you, you going to say the line? Nico, three points. Watson, two points. And then I had um, McGuinness or Dominic okay. Young for the one. Give it to McGuinness. I go with McGuinness. Some uh, deserved hard work there. Main event Saturday was the 28-22 defeat of the Cowboys over the Bunnies with a – the Bunnies just falling short in the end. Uh, stats barn and have a crack. Four tries out of five. Oh, four tries to five. Four out of three out of four conversions. Three out of five for the Cowboys. One out of one penalty attempt for the Cowboys. It was sixteen twelve at halftime to the Cowboys. Eighty three percent completion for South. Sixty nine percent for the Cowboys. Five line breaks to seven. Fifty one tackle bust to thirty nine. Ten offloads to eleven. Two forced dropouts to one. Two hundred ninety three tackles played. Three hundred forty eight. 12 errors to 10, three ruck infringements to one, three inside the 10 against the Cowboys, one sin bin for both teams. Trell with 107 supercoach points, Walker with 99, Braden Burns with 86. Some massive momentum shifts in this game. Uh, went from one one one, to, one side absolutely owning the game to sw- switching around and being the complete opposite within a couple of minutes. South's best performance for a long time. Um, both the few of their star players really stood up, Cook, 
Latrell, Walker, all decided to have a crack in this game and wasn't quite enough, unfortunately. Um, there was quite a few stale moments from both teams as well. Uh, they just sort of got it into the arm, uh, into the arm wrestle, and the, the and that <laughs> we saw it quite a bit this weekend with balls hitting the ground, the passes going out behind players, and I don't know exactly if it was um, what happened, but there was there was a fair bit of it, and uh, there was again in this game. Um, the execution just really let both teams down at times. Souths were really flat to start the game, and then the Cowboys were really flat at the back end of the game and probably should have and could have got run down. Um, missing 59 tackles, um, well, 51 tackles, not a good performance for an NRL team, obviously. Uh, neither is 40 for the for the South side, but um, both of these teams have been struggling and they, they fought, it, fought pretty hard to do their best. Um, <laughs> Cowboys' middle was really strong early. Um, they, they sort of battled down the door for, for against this South Sydney team and again it, they need to start though just I think yes. I know they really like the impact that, he, that he's given them but they're starting so slow and they're starting behind the eight ball because they're getting their front door kicked in and yeah. there's no there's no Murray there to clean up the mess in the middle and cool Matangi cool Matangi's locked on an edge they don't get him to play he doesn't come into the middle as, as much as he probably should um and yeah the the rest of the guys aren't really getting into where they need to go. And yeah, I'd really like to see him start Burgess. He's capable of more minutes than what they're playing him. And I think he'd be, uh, he'd be, be a big advantage ball in hand at the start of the game. But um, yeah. Especially because he always, he always, even I don't know, the bench, but when he starts, <laughs> he's always sniffing around the try line. He's, mm -hmm. he's such a good starter anyway. 100%. Um, he's got a good combination with Cook. He and yeah, just he, he makes so many more meters and post contact meters than what most of the South's forwards are. Yeah. And yeah, that's where they got the cows got the jump early in the middle, and then they started shifting from edge to edge. Um, <clears throat> some lovely work from Holmes and Tuolungi for for that second try for Dearden, uh, where. Holmes went up, got the ball. Tuolungi's gone inside, outside, back out to the edge, and then the flick pass for for Dearden. Um, that was one of the better tries in this game. Staff South started to get a roll on the middle, and it, it came when Burgess and Duncan got on the field and really started, you know, using that leg speed and power through the middle of the field. So it's two weeks in a row now, really. Um, and the Cowboys seem to drop off in defence there for a bit in the middle. It seemed to be Cotter was making a million tackles and. Nobody else really was. He was just running around trying to tackle everybody and the rest of them were sort of watching him and, and clapping him on. But um, st strong individual effort from Trell, but that should have been stopped. Like, he would he come back on the angle and barge through five blokes and yeah. put the ball down behind his head? Like, the, like we said before about the Titans one, he's managed to somehow grip it and put it over his shoulder and, and get it to the ground. But... um. Yeah, I dare say uh, Toddy Payton would have been, <laughs> been screaming and yelling about that try. Um, and that really started their roll on and they, they started um, started dragging defenders around, getting the middle, um, condensing the middle. Walker went went on his own, uh, scored a nice individual try with, with some footwork. It's was about the second time I think he's taken on the line this year <laughs> and he scored two tries when he's done it. Problem is, South's coughed up a few um, penalties and and errors and cows went straight down the other end of the field and did and did the exact same thing <laughs> as, as Walker did. It was probably a little bit tougher, actually. He took a few blokes with him, but yeah, they, they traded blows there, the, the five eights, and um, they got it got it back to pretty close. Um, Braden Burns had a really good game on that edge, I thought. He, he did get probably um, gifted... Gifted one, but um, I thought he had to do a fair bit of work for for some of these points that he scored out there, and nice to see him come back and obviously played the team that let him go, and he had a he had a pretty good performance out there for for the Cowboys. Um, Jesus um, Trell can off the bench. Sorry, Tom Lolo looked good off the bench again. Yeah, yeah. um, yeah. it's been what three or four weeks now where he's really started to. As I said, they just need that 120, 140 metres out of him, and, yeah. and that's what he's been doing recently, um, really getting them on, on the front foot. But Lee, if I, I think the trail can fuck up a short dropout more than anyone else I've ever seen. Yeah, 
<laughs> he just every second time he goes for the short dropout, it just it goes back over the over the dead ball line, or he kicks it out on the full. Or and that was a big moment in this game. Like if South get that ball, um, and it, it could be completely different, but obviously they they screw it up and it goes straight back to the the Cowboys. Um, Nanai again jumped over the top of someone <laughs> and grabbed the ball and. Managed to to score a try there. He he does that just as bad as well as any back row in the game. I think the way he's able to position himself and obviously coming with a ba- with a basketball background, he's he's got a pretty good jump on him as well for a big fella. So um, obviously that's a a target for them. Um, but um, they, what about ten seconds to go and Finiaki gets across? I don't know where he came from, but he managed to get across and get rid of that ball just before. Souths jump on it and score in the last seconds to 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 win the game, but I yeah, thought that was a fantastic effort from a big fella to get across there. It was because we um, it was funny we left after Deedon scored his second mm-hmm. try to, just to get down on the bus, and then we're on the bus last play, and I think every single bloke on the bus was watching their phones. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I've ever seen, but uh, it was yeah yeah fantastic effort there. Uh, Another entertaining game. Uh, South's a little bit back on track, uh, but just they need some cavalry now. I think. Yeah, Cooks had two really good games in a row as well, which is which has helped them a, a lot. Um, they just need these con- continued efforts out of the likes of Trell and um, Cody Walker, and it'll get them somewhere. Um, it's not obviously not going to get them back into the top eight, and it's not going to have them being contenders at the end of the year, but. To save some face and get out of the bottom four, they really need to start well, working to get. There's, a, I think, they've got quite a good draw now. I think they've got Parramatta and the Tigers looming where they can, they would think they can win a couple and just get everyone quiet for a, for a, for a month or so. Mm-hmm. Sign and Wayne this week should probably boost the spirits a little bit, I would imagine. Oh, the, um, the annual Indigenous round, I would imagine, would help. Um, That's true. Put didn't some enthusiasm into that, a couple uh, of those guys. Didn't we declare that a pearl once upon a time? South yeah. in this round. I'll be using it. I'm pretty sure I'll be using it this weekend. Right. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Deed and Sinbin obviously didn't help the Cowboys, but they managed to hang on um, at the back end of the game. Keon and Duncan were strong. Arrow had a good game considering he's running around with one arm. <laughs> the boat's busted as... Um, Obviously, I don't think they can pick him for Origin, and, and but I don't know if he sees out the season. Realistically, he was carrying that arm again, and I dare say we'll see that. He's obviously a tough, pretty tough bugger. Um, Cook was very good. Walker and the trail were the the two standouts realistically for the South team. Thought Vailia had a good game for the Cowboys. Yeah, bounce back from last week's effort. Mm-hmm. McIntyre and and Drinkwater were good. Lukey starting to hit some form as well. Uh, obviously, hasn't been back for long, but he seems to be getting stronger each game. Robson had another very good game. Um, but yeah, it was Din and I and, and Braden Burns that were the best for the Cowboys. If they if they pick Val for Origin, I would be running everything in Madge's arsenal mm-hmm. because he's, he's he's just not with us. I don't I don't know if they will. Absolutely. Well, the alternatives are, and I know it is origin, so it's different. You know, we say it every year, but I think they'll pick him. But yeah, yeah you'd be mad not to be throwing, going, uh, going his direction. Would, would love to have seen Bradman best if you're a New South Wales fan. Yes, fighting up against him, but I guess we'll see what gets produced now with with him out the out the window as well. But even just targeting kicks over the top of him, um, and just constant pressure, I, I would imagine they'd be going there once a set. Um, because, yeah, his defence has fallen off, considering he was one of the better defenders yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. But you watch him come back and not miss a tackle and iron blokes out in origin. Oh, 100%. We know. We know. <laughs> it's just the way it happens. Um, I thought Latrell was probably his man of the match in this game. Um, yeah. Just more consistent efforts. So I, I said last week if he has six more runs, they probably win that game, and he wasn't far off winning this game for him. Um, I had... Braden Burns for the two, or, or probably didn't realistically. I two tries and set his kicking ball. game, and then yeah, Burns or Walker for the one. No, go, go, uh, go, Burns. Go, Burns too. 
And then, yeah, we'll deed in a walker for the one. We can go with that. Uh, did Walker or deed? Uh, deed. Yeah. We get in the trail all but pulled off at uh, the biggest boo of the weekend until the Penrith right. game, which was up next, where Jerome Luai, uh, much less publicised, but perhaps picked up the biggest uh, biggest booze all weekend when he's oh, uh, really? wow. checking up on the big I suppose set. he's a bit of an enemy up there, isn't he, from, yeah, from the too. previous origin Still and Edwards experiences. Actually, uh, yeah, Edwards, in the that's, a, that's a weird one. I mean, I, I suppose they did lose to... Um, Blue, Brisbane Broncos, did, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Of last year, but uh, we get to that where, yeah, as I said, Edwards and Lua booed, and the whole team vociferously booed as, uh, and I don't think <laughs> it had anything to do with it. Uh, as Penrith went down 22 20 to the Warriors, uh, it was not <clears throat> by any means the, the, the greatest game of the weekend, but it was probably for atmosphere and then everyone along for the ride. It was a lot of fun. Uh, what do you make of it at home? Yeah, and you've been foreshadowing this uh, the little flat spot that Penrith's I, I was, been I was, running I, through. I, I, I knew a loss was coming, and I thought one more week. I just mm-hmm. couldn't bring myself to tip the Warriors with their outs and with what they've been doing um, in this game. They changed their attack up, which was um, instrumental, realistically. But uh, yeah, four tries apiece, three out of four conversions for the Warriors, two out of four for the Panthers. A missed penalty attempt for the Panthers, which I think was one of the worst conversion kicks we saw all weekend. But yeah. <laughs> anyway. That was, um, uh, I hate to say it, but that was a choke. It was 10-4 at half time. Penrith leading 88% completion, played 78% for the Panthers. 140 plus running meters and 100 plus post contact meters for the Warriors. Eight line breaks to six. 39 tackle bust to 28. 11 offloads to six. 337 tackles played 387 Seven errors to 11, seven penalties conceded to six, one ruck infringement against Penrith, one inside the 10 against both teams. A sin bin for Isaiah Yo. Edwards with 120 supercoach points, Chance Nickel Klockstad with 95, T. Marie Martin with 93. Just quickly, another game where one of the stars was shut down. They, geez, they did a good job on Fenor Blake in this game, but. They uh, did. Yes. What were your, what were your they did a pretty good job on Yo too. I thought uh, the yeah. Warriors actually. Uh, they, they put a fair bit of pressure on him and shut down some of his his options with when he was trying to ball play. But um, some really nice moments in attack from both teams. Uh, so it's really long range breaks and, and getting downfield. Toto terrorised them a couple of times. Uh, so really nice uh, plays on both sides of the ball from to Marie Martin. Uh, I thought he really challenge the line which he hasn't been doing recently um probably comes back to sean johnson not being there and it, it, him having to take the whole uh the whole load of what, what was going on in attack and didn't push as wide as they have been recently uh sort of really challenged the the a and b defenders before t- trying to play the ball from there which um which set up their attack a little bit better chance sniffing around in the middle uh changed to change their attack a bit as well uh just straightened them up at times and just constantly just screaming at everyone that was running around and diving on loose balls and all that kind of stuff, which is something they've probably been missing a little bit recently. Um, Pretty simple try really for the first one. Edwards just sort of scooted across the face of the defense and stepped off his right foot. And the Warriors would have been probably pretty disappointed that they didn't cover that that first try up against Edwards. Um, really nice finish from the Warriors for their first one. Uh, probably one of the one of the tries of the weekend, I thought, when Luai went on his own, some footwork, busted the line, uh, linked up with the back rower, and then and then gets the ball back and scores underneath the post. And that looked like it was going to be a massive momentum changer. I thought Penrith were probably going to put their foot down and, and push yeah. away after well, they had, that. Well, between just about that 20 minutes leading up to that was all Warriors. And mm-hmm. 20 minutes after it, actually. But it was, yeah, complete. That other period either side was all possession, all uh, warrior dominance. Unfortunately, they just didn't come away with more points, I suppose, yeah. but for the weight they had. So I guess kudos to the pen of defense. And then it was once um, they got back in the wrestle and Yo scored, it was like, okay, now they're going to get this job done. But uh, Well, that sin bin really hurt Penrith too. Yes. Yeah. Was, um, they took a lot of energy out of their tank. Um, while the Warriors didn't really put him away while he was off the field, they they got through a fair chunk of possession and and really chewed up 
um, a lot of meters through the middle of the field, which obviously made made people work double time to try to cover his AEO because we know the kind of work that he gets through. But yeah. um, yeah, they got straight back on the front foot. Basically, the moment he walked back on the field, like all the Penrith heads lifted, and it was just like, okay, we can play again now. And then they went went about it. Um, is it Kenny put him away for a not pretty nice try there? Just nice. Uh, ran a nice line yeah. and a bit of footwork and scored next to the post and got him back in, got him back into it. And they clicked into gear for about 10 or 15 minutes and just constantly had the Warriors on the back foot. And they were scrambling all over the place to, to not concede points because they were getting broken open on both sides of the field um, pretty regularly there for about 10 or 15 minutes. But they managed not to not to leak too many points in that in that little period, which was um yeah obviously kudos to them and something that they've they've been unable to do for like what half the season realistically yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah and they managed to get to get to do that um Edwards was creating all sorts of pressure he was <laughs> popping up in all different facets running heaps of meters getting the ball off to different people and um. It was what sixteen twenty with ten minutes to go, and then the fullback chimes in. Little Tua Peaky, geez, he's um, he's a good mover. Yes, he's, and some great acceleration over that first ten meters. Absolutely, he um, it would just uh, no, yeah, just back to what you said about Jones not being there. I think not just having that fullback kick to the corner made them think differently, and it came up with them playing the natural game. Through, I guess three essentially running halves. Players in support and yeah, really focusing through, through the middle. Mm, yeah, then it makes a fair bit of sense. Um, I thought uh, I thought Luai was fantastic in this game. By the way, I thought yeah, he was yeah, absolutely uh, was standing. Um, Probably the most direct I've seen him play. From, yeah, but for, from a point of view, of is, where a seven uh, that I was pleased to see it. He created a few opportunities without it really paying off, but I thought his kicking game was pretty much on point. There was not a lot, uh, not a lot I could knock him on. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, yeah, as I said, Tua Peaky gets in with eight minutes to go, and then kicks a pressure kick from the sideline to to get him out there. There's only a couple of minutes to go, and Toto just charges down the field, runs fifty, sixty meters, gets it back to Luai, and then he um throws the cutout ball, makes poor Joe Cole jump two meters in the air, and the bloke just got absolutely assaulted through the middle of the field. I think it was Violia just rearranged every rib that he's got in his body and then he got up and um just like the Penrith supporters he just spewing all over the place <laughs> he had a, had a he's so good Brian Toy by the way just um just on him making that run but he the work he does um you know just obviously notice all the time but um just everywhere um breaking tackles doing a lot of the hard yards actually went away from kicking lots to Taruva in this game it was almost like the old days, so they're going to pepper Bizza, and Bizza got the job done. I thought it's, it's just they only do it to stop the second tackle. Yeah, because they know if they kick to Taruva, then they've got to try and tackle Toto <laughs> when he <laughs> play when Taruva yeah. plays the ball. Um, yeah, fantastic effort from the Warriors. It wasn't the the highest quality game from Penrith. They'll be dis- disappointed. Um, we know what they've got in, in store. So <laughs> if they can get back to where they've been, um, obviously they've been running through a flat spot at the moment. They're really getting pressured. They're, they're, they're again, they're another one that's starting to get into their list a fair way. And yeah. you can start seeing it through a few of the performances. Of Purely and simply, if you're, if you're comparing through. pace of the match intensity to this, to the Saturday night game, it's just completely different gravy. And, and that was, that was more apparent here. And I think I already had them right for the picking, but, Genuinely, Penrith uh, are sitting there. If Sharks will never get a better opportunity to to tail Penrith up this week. That's without and looking. Much, yeah. I don't think Penrith won at Shark Park since 2012 or something Is that like right? that either. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> they only gen- we I think they've only been down there about four times since then because we generally yeah. only play Penrith once a year. Yeah, okay. and it's normally up here, but um, yeah, they, they haven't won down there for. Over over a decade, so um, I thought Cole had a pretty good game actually. Um, yeah, his kicking was decent, got him around the field. Kenny was 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 um wasn't too bad either. Martin and Garner were, were good. You mentioned Toto, he was very good. Lu and Yo also. Edwards was their best player again. He just 
gets himself into that position, in the right positions all the time. Pompey had a pretty good game, considering yeah. someone that we, we put a bit of crap on, um, with especially defensive-wise. He's never been too bad ball in hand, but I thought he was really good both sides of the ball. Uh, Walker, again, had really good impact coming off the bench. Young Laban looks like a player of the future. He's got the all the physical attributes. He's just got to obviously put it together with time on the field. Tavanga, Tavanga was very good, as was Chance and Tuapiki. But it was Barnett and, um, to yep. me, Martin that were the best two players on uh, on the Warriors side. Um, just a quick mention to you, I thought Paul Roach coming on did a, quite a good job out of dummy half mm-hmm. uh, with uh, Egan missing. Considering but, he's played fuck all minutes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, thought, I thought he got through a lot, but uh, I, I, you mentioned Barnett. He was another one that stood out for me. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> How are you give it, giving the points here? He's just been, he's just so physical. And you know what he's going to do every week, Barnett. You know, he's going to give you 15 solid quality hit ups. Yeah, he's not going to miss too many tackles. He's going to make most of his tackles. And a few of them, he's going to sting blokes as well. So, And all the shit is completely gone from his game. Yeah. From when he was at Newcastle. He was one of the, one of the very naughty boys. And I, no, he's one once or two. He has once once every now and then he, he loses it a little bit, but nothing like he used to. Yeah. Um, Tamari Martin for mine was the difference in the game. Uh, some really nice short balls and just controlling where the attack was going for the Warriors. I gave him the three points, Edwards two, and then I either had Yo or Barnett for the one, or sorry, Luai, Yo or Barnett for the one. God, that's tricky because I would have t- I had two O in the mix. Um, we'll, we'll go. Actually, we'll go Luai for one because he, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, he had his best game of the year by far. I'm happy with that. Forty-eight sixteen storm over the Eels. The only blowout all Magic round, uh, and almost for a sneaky half an hour, you half thought it wasn't going to be. But as we keep seeing from Parramatta, they hit that well, four. They hit half time. Well, yeah, the and, buzzer uh, goes off in half time, and they fucking change, put different people in the uniform or something. Yeah, they, they disappeared second half, but uh, a comprehensive Melbourne performance. How the stats reflect that? We had eight tries to three, seven out of eight conversions played, two out of three, one out of one penalty attempt for the Storm, 16 10 at half time to Melbourne, 86 percent completion played, 72 percent. 199 plus running meters for Melbourne, nine line breaks to five, 35 tackle bus to 25, 21 offloads to 19, 291 plus kicking meters for the Melbourne side, 294 tackles played 316, nine errors to 11, four penalties conceded to two, four ruck infringements against Melbourne, three against Parramatta, one inside the 10 against Melbourne, Harry Grant with 116 supercoach points, Katoa with 108, and Talagi with 102. You look very dangerous for a little little periods in this game. About the only one that did on that Parramatta team. But yeah, what do you make of it? Brown was getting them into decent spots, and um, yeah, he was, got yeah. Tulagi away a couple of times. But um, yep. they looked really decent in the first half. They were creative. They were competitive. Um, and then yeah, another second half where walking and half-assed efforts was just the name of the game for Parramatta. I, I don't think I've seen a forward pack walk as much as Parramatta do in the second half. <laughs> It's <laughs> just so many blokes just walking backwards and forwards. Um, and it really disrupts their defensive line, obviously, which we've spoken about earlier in the year. Um, this Munster... I think part of this is the inverse <clears throat> of what the Sharks do in that they don't get a lot out of their back five. Their back five are mm-hmm. of carrying metres, and I don't know whatever the stats were They that reflected them. 100%. No, they had nothing. Right. They're like... The game's passed Sevo by. Like you may as well go to England and score fifty tries a year over there, because yep. and then it might be too fast for him over there. But he, I don't think he adds. Put any. him in the back row over there. <laughs> yeah, they may as well do it here. Like he adds nothing to this team here. Yeah, he yeah, got a junk time try again, but um, yeah, correct. Very Just to correct. Make it, oh, he gets a, he gets a last minute try to make everyone in with them <laughs> all happy. But apart from that, um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, like the rest of these add nothing. Yep. Um, 
Munster injured right on half time. Um, I'm guessing when Harry Grant got into the sheds, <laughs> old mate um, Bellyache walked up to him and went, mate, this second half is all yours. <laughs> Nobody else is going to do anything. You need to do it. And he went, okay, and came out and put on an absolute fucking masterclass in that second half. He was involved in everything, just getting second rowers one-on-one with the outside backs um, and halves, continually running the ball, dragging defenders left, right, and center. And then, yeah, just absolutely carved this Parramatta defensive uh, defensive line apart. And he did it single-handedly part, a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, just the way he was able to set up, like Bloor and Katoa were having absolute cracker games, and the way he was able to get them one on one with a small half or or an outs, you know, an outside back, and they were just standing in tackles and offloading, and then you had support players just rushing through the line, and it was an absolute masterclass from Harry Harry Grant in that second half. And exactly what you said there is then what brought Remus Smith into this game as well, who was Correct. it was had his best game all year, but he. Came with a couple of tries. Absolutely flattered <laughs> off the back of other oh, people's work. Right. But yeah. Yeah, no, hundred percent. You gotta give it to him when he does because he's um occasionally goes missing oh, in the games. Yeah. But um yeah, just some of the short, long passing from Harry Grant was tremendous in this game and we've been waiting for it all year realistically. Um we, we know he's got it in him and it was just it was just a matter of the time, but with nobody else around, <laughs> he just took it all on his own back and um, and did it fantastically. Um, Salangi looks like a better player every time he steps out, especially when he's in that fullback position. He's really good yeah. at creating space for himself, um, get, putting footwork on players, and they just stand there and look around like, where the hell did that bloke disappear to? <laughs> I couldn't even get a hand on him. Um yeah, I'd be very surprised if you don't see Gutherson come back and fold somewhere into the back line. Into the centres. They may as well, yeah. It doesn't add to doesn't really add to any yard or it does because he'll run, but he's not a big body's gonna drag them into the game either. It takes you, you probably will take a lot more hit ups out of dummy half though than some of these other outside backs that they've had. Obviously it all depends on, on the coach that comes in now. Um but yeah, I but he's a I wouldn't be mucking about if if you're if you're Parramatta, you have to tie him down. If they haven't already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a very good impact on Parra's attack when he, whenever it was good. A um, couple of decent defensive moments as well. Uh, he, he really gets his body in the line uh, when when they get close to the line. He's not scared of taking a taking a bump uh, and to try and stop one from stop someone from try, scoring a try. Um, I mentioned the back rowers. They had a really good night running and offloading. Um, Wishart had some nice touches again, as did Far Logo, but um, a little bit limited in what in what they were doing because they, they were just so controlled at running to, down those tram lines and and Harry Grant through the middle of the field. So they probably didn't get as much ball as they might with the likes of Hughes and Munster in the halves, but uh, they um they had some some good touches again. So I'd agree with that, and and maybe they came into this game just thinking we know we can belt Paris front door down, so maybe the, a lot of that was plan coming in but i suspect yeah it's, it's more harry as you've mentioned well there harry, was a fair bit more but... there was more ball movement before uh in the first half like munster was trying to get the outside backs a bit more involved but yeah um coats had another fantastic game he's he's quickly becoming one of the best out uh best wingers in the game i love watching that bloke play uh footy looks yeah, just looks fantastic in open field uh, does yeah. does a bit more work than he used to now as well. He could go missing there a bit. Hundred uh, percent. Back in the day, and uh, almost the most spectacular moment of magic around the grubber back for Harry through the middle. That was yep. um, very he grabbed very... himself an intercept as well. Yeah. Um, Warbrick probably had one of his better games. Yes. Yeah. That we've seen out of him this year. Um, but yeah, Parramatta. From for all the good stuff they did in the first half, they just threw it all out the window in the second half, and um, was not good. The back five struggled uh, for Parramatta. Talangi, apart from Talangi, obviously, Talagi. Sorry, um, most of the forwards struggled as well. To be honest, like <laughs> they were going okay for the first half an hour or so, but they, they just uh, fell into a heap at the back end of the game. Paulo and Assi were okay. Cartwright had a good game. Uh, I have to give that to him. He, he was very 
he had plenty of involvement and did a lot of good stuff. But um, yeah, Brown and Talagi look like the only two that could crack the line against this Melbourne team. Uh, men, I mentioned Wishart for long ago. Bloor was really strong. I thought um, Kamikamika had a pretty good game. They've found something with Bloor, Bloor now. He's uh, now a month back in, and they've now got two serious weapons in him and Katoa. Absolutely. Um, Kamikamika and Meany were good. You mentioned Rem Smith and Coates. They were they were great, um, as was Katoa. But, yeah, Grant was the one for me. Yeah, three to Harry. Uh, two Katoa, one to... Where are you going next, actually? I gave it to Coates. Oh, but... Coates, actually. Okay, yeah. yeah Xavier okay. Coates, but yeah. there's another one couple to... that you could have given it to. Coates. But... I'm fine with that. It will go uh, Harry, Katoa, and Coates. If you're – so Trent Barrett's there now. I don't know who's coming in long term. Is there an immediate fix to Paramount? It's so hard now because your squads are your squad. You can't just go to free agency anymore. They need half a forward pack, realistically. But like they should go and try and throw nine hundred k at Angus Crichton now, if yeah. he's on contract. Like he's he's genuinely one of the hopes of the side here. Yeah. And Cartwright's now, probably been close to their best forward. Paulo's been good, but um, Regan Campbell Gillard's been very rarely seen this year. Lane, I don't know, his game's just fallen apart. Uh, he no longer has that uh, that offload, and really doesn't seem to be interested in in hitting the line. Most of their bench you could replace with pretty much anyone else's bench um, in the competition. So, yeah, they need a strike back rower and another prop. They need a they need a hooker because uh, Lusick's not getting the job done at the moment. Um, no, and um, they got Lomax coming, but you know they'd love someone like a yeah, even just like a junior Tupo, even someone Fisher like Harris, that. Spencer Lenu. Um, they need some impact off their bench, then, and yeah. yeah, they need a, a another back rower that's either a ball player or someone that's got a good offload in them and is willing to take it into the line. It was Sean Lane, eighteen months ago, twelve months ago, but it's not at the moment. So, I don't think it gets better. Even with Moses coming back, I don't think he's gonna. He'd want to be able to walk on water to drag them out of it. <laughs> Anyway, we get to the last one, uh, 24-12 Dolphins over the Tigers. Oh, uh, did you have any? Do you have anyone in mind that might like as I a said, coach? I, I, uh, I don't know who's out there. Mm, it's not Madge, a great deal, is there? Like McMadge, Holbrook. Like they're all been there, done that. Who is it? Unless you're going to go to – unless you're really going to try and throw a checkbook at Billy Slater or something. Like Slater, Ryle. He's not – he's he's well and I think he's very happy with what he's doing at the well, moment. Do, I think he'll just keep going until the Melbourne job comes up. Just... Media and two months of coaching a year. Yeah. I think uh, he's getting a good wicket. Who, I don't know. Um, someone right. for me, like John Morris would be someone that could probably yeah. get a bit of toughness into this team and, and is – Pretty good at getting the you know forwards rolling and and getting the best out of some players. Um, I think they wanted. I think they said they wanted Bennett, didn't they? Yeah, no, they they said they've been talking to him since May the second, and they they missed him. So, um, he obviously unfinished business itself. So he says they don't feel like the they don't feel like a club that's going to back a rookie coach, which doesn't leave your Rileses or your. Uh, no. and, and I'm I'm in that conversation keeping Billy Slater not as a rookie coach. I think that's more marquee where they'd be happy to go, but I, I don't think there's a – it wouldn't be an off-market. If they win six games here, maybe Barrett ends up doing it, but, like, we've been there, done that. So I think it leaves, yeah, Holbrook, maybe Morris. Um, Steve Price, Sharks Steve. assistant coach, yeah. won a comp overseas. Was assistant to Bennett in 2010. Was assistant to Flanagan in 16. Someone like, uh, and I suppose with Ben Hannett's in Queensland. I think he's there's reps on him, you know, for, yeah, okay. from away. But like I said, I, I can't see them going with a Riles or a, a Hannett or anyone like that. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know who's I, and who's overseas. No one. Nathan Brown's in their system. I think. I think he's in the June. He uh, I think he's from what I heard today. He's walked away. He's he's given okay. up his NRL coaching ambitions so. altogether. Fair enough. Yep. Easy playing golf and um, <laughs> being an assistant. Jason Taylor, like they're all just yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. And I, I like I said, I, I don't believe there's the kind of board that's going to back a rookie. So it, probably Michael Maguire. Promise you, um, Trent Barrett's not the answer. But anyway, we'll move oh, on. And, you know, <laughs> Madge didn't exactly cure, cure cancer at the Tigers, did he? Yeah. But yeah. May have been Speaking of the Tigers. Here we go. 12, 24. <laughs> Dolphins over the Tigers. You can do the stat. Two tries to four, two out of two conversions, played four out of four, six, uh, 12 six at half time to the Dolphins. 90% completion for the Tigers, 71% for the Dolphins. Three line breaks to five, 44 tackle bust to 29, 14 offloads to six, one force dropout by the Tigers. 357 tackles played 361, seven errors to 13, eight penalties conceded to seven, two ruck infringements to zero, zero inside the 10. To the Tigers, two against the Dolphins, two sin bins for the Tigers. Olam with 98 super coach points, Lemuelu with 96, and Hammer with 94. I said to GT that you'd be happy that your streak of teams coming and playing to the Tigers level could continue in this game. <laughs> Did a bit. Um, Dolphins looked a bit quicker across the ground. At the, at the start of the game, uh, another one, first try of the game, pretty regulation, just a shift to an edge, and Bostock cut back inside our, our um, perennial mate, Charlie Staines there, <laughs> sitting out in the wing. Um, I thought Alan Marlow had probably his best game. Obviously, he's he only good. played a couple now, but um, yeah. he was really strong in contact, and, and the offload for um, to put Olam over... Uh, a minute before half time, had calls. I, I feel like he's someone worth persevering with now. Get mm-hmm. some footy into him and get get the ball bombed to him. Give him like this is a team that needs points. So if he's going to provide anything, it's it's worthwhile. Yeah, pretty strong in contact and um doesn't seem like the worst defender in the world out there either. So um yeah, someone as you said probably worth looking looking at. Um, what was it about a couple of seconds before half time and Naden with the super Superman flying shoulder to Bostock's head after he'd already he'd already dropped the fucking ball. Yes. <laughs> like, yes, Tigers had the ball at the time. And he's gone flying through the air and put his shoulder and bicep straight to the side of the bloke's head. It's sent off for ten minutes. Oh mate. And then obviously Olam uh not the great not in a great position but hip drop and another Symbian. I thought they did well to defend as long as they did uh, during that period uh, to keep the Dolphins out. Dolphins had a few opportunities. They, as, as you said, they probably didn't play at their best, but um, they, uh, they, they're probably unlucky. Obviously you get the ball that bounces off, um, off a tiger into Jeremy Marshall King and then hammer runs away. And th- there's points there that could have yeah. gone in either, you know, well, probably shouldn't have been points. Could have been, yeah. You know, Tigers with the ball. Well, he didn't actually he didn't actually hit his arm, so it just bounced off his no, chest. I've, I've so, seen that called but, plenty of times. Yeah, <laughs> and to the letter of the law, it was probably the right call, but could have gone the other way. Um, so they're probably a bit unlucky there. Appy, um, you know, got them back close, and I thought they might have actually put something up there that when they got back to sort of eighteen twelve. They looked like they were. They were coming. Their, their middle was a bit stronger than it had been because their middle was pretty poor for parts of very a lot of the first half, realistically. Yeah. Um, but they did get a bit stronger there through the middle. And um, 25 to go. It's just, I don't, what's happening with their attack? Like, yeah, I know Galvin, yeah, we, you know, he's, yeah. he's pushing passes at the moment and, you know, he's trying, probably trying a little bit too hard to probably just run a little bit more. But, well, There's they nothing. don't. They, they nothing don't, around him. They don't use Buller at all. Mm. But I, I don't know what their plan is with him. But he seems to only just um, push passes onto one of the wider blokes. They don't. Correct. Yep. Uh, and that's not for lack of effort in him. But um, they don't really isolate him on anyone. They, they, there's just um, not really any spark there. You're missing a couple, but they need Luai. They need Luai next year. Like I, I think put it this way, that they were on top for large periods of this game, the Tigers, in terms of field position and possession. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they weren't, they were matching Dolphins for large chunks, and that was with eleven blokes for a bit. Yep. Uh, and the difference was Hammer, the fact that one team had a bloke that's lightning that can, if they get him a bit of space and time, he's 
going to burn them and score. And and have... one came directly through luck. The other one was well worked, but yeah, 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 yeah. Either way, they finished it. And I, you know, watching a little way earlier in the afternoon, I think he can't get it quick enough. I think Taruva can't get there quick enough. You know, I'm still starting to think that the conversation about Taruva playing fullback needs to be had. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, I thought... I'd be more than happy to have Buller on a wing. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. You exactly. know, he can jump, you know, it, it, it lessens his involvement and probably, you know, makes him a little bit more. Um, well, he actually becomes part of the attack rather than just trying to push the ball along That's the right. lines. So. And there's lots of like, there's lots of blokes that do that for other clubs. You, you have Garricks, you have Lomaxes and co that add more. With that, just being able to do that, and you but, build him up with a little bit of size. He might even become a decent center at one point. But um, yeah. yeah, but there's not much. Olam was fantastic. Olam and has been. Mm, great. Yeah, like he's our, the only point of attack worth talking about here. And tried his ass off. And if he doesn't get binned, maybe there is more hope. But the rest of it, yep. I don't know what you do with Galvin. I don't know whether you need to just give him a few weeks off to freshen up and have a kill in reserve grade or something. I don't know. I mean, there's no. We're at the bottom exactly. of the table. Who, who, who do you bring in? Yeah, exactly. I believe um, Dewey's, a, Dewey's a month away, you know, playing for a, a contract. Maybe he is the one that comes back and can can produce something because at least when we're, we're at rock bottom, he was our best. He could produce points. Yeah, he was always constant effort, yeah. Um, Alamalo, Clemmer, Pole were good. Safarth, Twal. Pole had his best game in a while. Yeah. Safarth and Twal uh, were very good. So was Stefano actually. Um, he, he did a fair bit of work in this one, which he he hasn't done a lot of recently. Um, Sullivan was was good again. He's had two back to back decent games. Um, yeah, but Olam and Appy were were the two big big standouts for the Tigers. I thought Herbie and Bostock Bostock had good games, as did both the halves. Uh, without being outstanding, they they were good. Uh, Kenny Bromwich and Aiken had very good games. Um, they had a big impact actually on the on the edges That's of the mention, field. Mention them. Yep. Yeah. Um Nichols managed to grab himself another try and showed everyone his two missing teeth on the Matty John show after the, <laughs> after the after the show. So that was good. But um I thought, yeah, Jeremy Marshall King, Hammer, Lemuel, who had a fantastic game. Uh and then obviously got him the 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 try at the end to really kill it off with with some footwork through the middle and put Hammer away. But um Hammer was the star of the show. Yeah. Um as I said, if, if Hammer plays for the Tigers, I think I think Tigers win. Yeah, you probably flip the result and go close to it. Yeah, so I'll give him three. Yep. Olam deserves the two, I think. Yep. And you know, uh work and attack he got through. Eight can one. Or Nichols. Which got Nichols again with another try, and um, I think he got up up near thirty odd tackles and was okay. leading the run meters for you know in uh, we'll limited go, minutes. That was so. a professor and a uh, uh, very unlucky you and Aiken. Yes. Yeah, but Doug, I am only gonna. I think even Bennett said as much. So they play like shit, but got two points. So move on, and we'll see what they bring to the table next week. Tigers, unfortunately, now are on a five day turnaround in Townsville. So <laughs> how good? Not not ideal there. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, what have we got? Have you got a pop plan of the week? It's... I do. I thought Danny Levi from the Raiders side, yeah. um, he did, did, did work, but, uh, the bloke missed six tackles and only had two runs out of the 50 or 60 minutes he was on the field. Um, and really didn't seem to offer much at all, except for picking the ball up and passing it to somebody else. So I'll, I'll go with Matt Casiva. Like I said, I think he's, <laughs> yeah, he's not yeah. with us anymore. I think he had made, Got two tackles and ran about eighty meters, uh, but he wasn't alone in that team. Sean Lane will throw in as well, hey? Why not? Absolutely. You got uh, what are your next? A slap of the week? Um, kick out. I know they put a lot of bodies on him, but um, he missed five tackles and had three pretty um pretty poor handling errors in in a game where he um was expected well you know i expected him to have a, a really big impact on the game and and didn't didn't at all so we know how much better he can be um i got to go brett naden don't i let's <laughs> go with him yeah, was... change your momentum costs you know all that costs the tigers a game so cuz he's looked good in bits and pieces he has like, he's tried but uh... it just without fail there's a a bonehead play Every every week now. Yeah. Uh, salute, Barney. Finish with a good one. Harry Grant. 
that it was an absolute masterclass for mine. Obviously, notable mentions. I thought Armstrong had a really good game uh, and was involved in heaps for Newcastle. But yeah, I haven't seen a better game out of a hooker from uh, looking twelve months ago. Yeah, <laughs> probably around Origin time last year when when um, him and Hunt combined as two two men as one player in the Origin. So yeah, I thought absolute masterclass from Harry Grant. Beautiful. Uh, oh, well, first of all, salute Magic Round in Brisbane. Another fantastic weekend. Uh, cannot speak high enough of it. And look, the the couple of fullbacks that lit up uh, lit up Magic Round there, uh, the Hammer in the last game, unfortunately, and the Armstrong there with uh, starting off that uh, Saturday session uh, with a bit of excitement, but. Uh, a great weekend. Can I do it all again? And, uh, of course, leave us some feedback below. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us some comments. Uh, you can find us on Facebook threads and Instagram at footy and frothies. So get in touch with us there. And we will be back to preview. I believe it's Indigenous around this week. So we'll be back to preview all of that very shortly. Thank you, guys. And we will talk soon.